Hey everyone, hi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Shelly and I have a feeling right at the very beginning that this is going to be quite a long one because I am going to be doing my own version of the evolution of a reader tag, uh, which was created by my friend Jack at Spread Book Joy and I was tagged by her. Now, I decided to use this tag as a structure or an opportunity to talk about my, my reading life and the way it has changed from when I was a wee child to who I am now. Now there are a lot of there are a lot of pieces along the way and I knew that I wanted to put on makeup while I did that and get ready with you all. And so I'm just gonna let you all know up front that there I'm going off script. I'm not necessarily following the questions to a T and I'm gonna be telling you about my reading life starting um, starting when I was a wee child. So if you are excited <laughs> If you if you like this kind of video it's gonna be very chatty um, then I'm, I'm excited that you're gonna come along with me there are some highs there are some lows and I think you will get to know me quite a bit better I'm a little bit nervous but yeah and um, if you like this kind of video in general uh, chatting being very chatty <laughs> talking about books and reading, then I would encourage you to subscribe and stick around. So let's just get into this. I'm going to leave Jack's original questions down below so that at least you know what she asked. But I'm going to start off with when I was a kid. So I was a kid who was schooled at home, a homeschooled kid. I was schooled at home by my mother with my five siblings. And we, she made it a priority to visit the library. I mean, I remember getting my library card. I had to have been, I mean, I was under the age of 10. I think I was probably six when I got my library card. And that was a big moment, <laughs> signing my name to a library card. Now, I've been told this, but I don't remember necessarily. I remember bits and pieces. But when I was a kid, I've been told by my mother that I loved picture books. I would sit as a toddler and I would like flip through the pictures of the picture books. And I was very engrossed by the imagery, the art, the colors. And that was, you know, I don't, I don't remember this. I do remember being very into princess picture books. Um, I was one of those young gals who just loved a princess. <laughs> I loved the, the beauty of it all, the like red of the roses in the background, very like medieval, very um, Sleeping Beauty-esque, that type of picture book. I just loved it all. I love the colors. I love the, the imagery. I love the way that the, the women were designed. And I was very much that kind of picture book reader. I liked books with that, which is so funny now because that's not necessarily what I gravitate towards now but I liked like classic fairy tales in the forms of picture books. I do remember that. I was very into princesses. Um, but I do remember, I do have a prop for this. I don't have very many props, but I have a prop for this, something to show you. Um, the first time that I can remember seeing myself in a picture book where I felt like the story was telling my story and that I could really see my image in a picture book was with this dirty little thing. <laughs> um, let's see. This might have been the actual copy that I read as well because it's discarded. It's a discard from my library, like my hometown library. And it is the book Messy. So this is the book Messy by Barbara Botner. And it tells the story of a young gal who is very messy. And she is, you know, tries to constantly kind of get herself together. And then even when she does, even at the end, she still continues to be herself, which is a very messy individual. And I am, I was, and I still am a very messy individual. <laughs> and I was called Miss Messy growing up. I was just prone to spilling things. I was prone to making a mess. Um, my grandfather would tease that if we want, he wanted to see what I ate that day, he just had to see my shirt, the shirt I was wearing, because I was just such a, I was just, that kind of kid. I was just messy. Um, my room was messy. <laughs> I shared my room with my two sisters and my older sister is just naturally cleaner than I am and so I'm sure it annoyed her that I was I was just always a messy kid. I guess a better way of putting it would be that we are all messy just some messes don't bother people <laughs> you know. Some messes are, can just stay there and I was just one of those people who was totally okay with letting a mess stay there. Um, I have definitely evolved from that state of being. 
I'm not the cleanest. I'm not the tidiest. Like I don't, everything doesn't need to be perfectly in its place, but my tolerance for mess is a lot different than it was when I was a kid. Moving from picture books though, um, and if you want to talk about grade school books, I remember really loving Miss Piggle Wiggle. <laughs> I just, I think I remember being delighted by Miss Piggle Wiggle. I really loved Amelia Bedelia. Uh, I thought the Amelia Bedelia books were hilarious. And I also remember really loving the Dear America books. The, um, the books about young ladies in history, <laughs> they're like fictional accounts of women in history, like the Revolutionary War, that's the only one that's coming to mind. <laughs> and it would be like their diary of those events. I remember really liking those. Um, and then as far as reading routines go, during this time in my life, it was very much um, when I was like, let's say, I don't know, I don't even remember when it started. It started so like, we did this ever since I was born, but I know at some point it had to have started. But my dad would wake us up in the morning around 6 a.m. and he would wake up all the kids. We would sit in the office slash school room and he would read the Bible to us or a story, a devotional story, like, um, but typically it was a passage from the Bible and then we would discuss it. And that went on, um, all throughout my teenage years up until I think I moved out. So this was just one of those routine reading routines that we got into. Um, also being homeschooled, my parents had a really high, they put a really high priority on reading. And so one of the tasks, though I didn't like it so much then, was to read for two hours every single day. Um, starting at the age of, I don't know, maybe 11 or 10. And there was um, a reading list that we could choose from. And they, if you all are interested in like homeschool curricula, curriculum that I did when I was a little bit you know, older, I think again, like nine, 10, I don't like something like that. They were into the Robinson curriculum. Um, I've since looked up the curriculum and I'm just, I don't know, I don't know what my opinion is of it now, but it was interesting going back and looking at those reading lists. And you know, Charles Dickens was on that list. I don't remember reading Charles Dickens. I remember reading the uh, autobiography or the biography of George Washington. And that was like a big one, I remember. Yeah, there was, or you know, like the Elsie books. Anyways, I feel like I'm go getting off track, but they did put a high price. My parents put a high value on independently reading and making sure that we got our history, literature, um, some of the sciences from independently reading ourselves. I can hear my children, so I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, break up the fight. All right, we're getting into some of the some of the juicy stuff. So, when I was I had to have been a preteen, my aunt gifted us the box set, gifted my family the box set of Harry Potter, the first 3 books cuz that's all that was out at the time. And it was a family gift. She had heard that it was very popular and she gifted it to us. And I was the one that was interested in it. Harry Potter was one of the books that made me really, really love reading. I loved that series. I was just about Harry's age growing up with, with him at the time. And so, you know, I could really ID with like what he was going through as like a preteen and being invited to a magical school was literally like my dream come true. I felt like JK Rowling was plucking the story from my literal dreams and putting it on the page. And it was an adventure and it was magical and I just loved it. I was so enamored by it. I mean, I don't think anyone else in my family even got into it. My brother was far more classy than I was. He was reading Lord of the Rings and my sister was reading like Amish romances or thrill, like Christian thriller books. But here I was curled up in bed reading Harry Potter and I would read, oh, I think I have to sneeze. I would read books one through three and then I would just start over again. And I was just, I was just in love. When the fourth book came out, I, I bought it. I think I bought it. I think I bought it from Costco actually. And then I, that was incorporated in my reading routine. And then I would read one through four and then I would just start over again, reading one through four. And I just loved it. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. Now, if you know the history of Harry Potter, 
especially in conservative circles. Um, at the time, there was a lot of hoopla. There was, uh, Harry, Harry Potter was extremely controversial. I think it probably is today, though I don't really know. I don't keep up with the Harry Potter controversy, controversy, even though I know it's controversial more for its author nowadays than it is for its content, the content inside of the Harry Potter books. But if you rewound, rewound the clock and we're back into the days of, um, Harry Potter and the height of the Harry Potter popularity in conservative circles or in some conservative circles parents were concerned that their children were learning witchcraft from it and it was very in vogue for conservatives to not allow their children to read Harry Potter and so um, my parents decided at the time that they didn't want me to read Harry Potter either and so they put the books in a box and they hid the box. Now I was a very crafty child. I was a very, very like mischievous child at heart. And if you tell me not to do something, the, the, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disobey. I am not, I mean, as much as I'd like to please people, there I do have a little, you know, mischievous streak in me. So I would inevitably find a box that looked like it could store all of the Harry Potter books. Yes, <laughs> I would find the box and I would sneak read the books. I would read them without my parents' permission, you know, un like hidden. I would hide them under the mattress. I would read them at night. I would create little forts and read them. And as always, I would get caught you know, reading these books. And it was, you know, much to the chagrin and disappointment of my parents, probably less because I thought it was because of Harry Potter, but it was definitely more because of my actions and being sneaky and being mischievous and being dishonest. And so we got into this cycle where I would get caught reading them. They would take the books away or I would confess because I would feel so bad that I was reading these books that I wasn't allowed to read. And the books would go back into a box and the box would be rehidden and I would take that as an opportunity to seek those books out again and find them and start reading them. And this was our cycle up until um, I, I know that my dad, which now I, now I can laugh about it, but at the time it was not funny. It happened one final time and I think it was the final straw for, for my dad. And so my parents made the decision to take the books to the garbage um, to throw the books in the garbage and they you, they also poured liquid on top of the books so that I couldn't dig them out of the garbage to read them. So the books were literally destroyed in front of my in front of my 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 eyes and that was a very you know horrifying moment for me. Now when I look back I was just like everybody was you know my parents are just trying to do what they thought was best for me. And they really, you know, they didn't want me to get caught up in witchcraft. And I was being disobedient and I can see that now, but at the time I was just like, you know, my world was, my my wor world fell apart quite literally um, because my world was in those books <laughs> and those books were destroyed. And then I don't know, I don't really know what happened from there. And I think what happened was around this time, with my reading life, because that's what this is about. Around this time with my reading life, uh, I started going to community college. I went to our local community college when I was 14. Uh, around this time, a lot of my homeschooled friends were going to high school, high school, public high school, or private high school. And I really wanted to join, join the crowd. I didn't want to be homeschooled through high school. And I was ready to see the world, to be part of the world. I started going to our local college when I was 14 and with my sister, she was 16 at the time. We're only 18 months apart. And I took my very first class was an English class. And it was more about the mechanics of writing, some reading assignments, grammar, things like that. Uh, I started reading for I want to say I started reading for educational purposes, but I, I know that that's not really, I was always reading for school, you know, being assigned, but it was very much like, this is your assigned reading, you must read it and then report back on it. And it was one of the first times, or it was definitely the first time that I was reading for a teacher and having to write about it. And though I did that uh, in my homeschooled life a little bit, it was just different. It was different being with somebody who was, 
teaching and teaching English as their career and reporting back on my thoughts in a very specific way or directly answering a very specific question. It was just different. And so I started reading. I remember during those years, I'm sure I was sans Harry Potter at this point in time, but I was reading um, Mark Twain. Uh, I was reading, you know, short snip. I should go back and look. I was reading um, passages of classics and having to deconstruct them. I was reading a lot of short stories. I remember reading Poe around this time, Edgar Allan Poe. And so in a lot of ways, my reading shifted to be quite academic because I wasn't just reading for English classes. I was taking art and music and I took my first chemistry class and for math, there wasn't a lot of reading math. It was just more like practicing the, the equations. But my education and my reading life really changed because it was being assigned by someone, you know, other than my parents um, or my parents' friends, you know, from, from church or something like that. It was very, it was, it was very different. During this time when I was 14, 15, 16, 17, I was reading definitely some for pleasure, but a lot, the bulk of my reading came from classroom assignments, from what they were telling me to read in school and then doing the classroom assignments or the class assignments and, you know, being graded on it. And it was, it was definitely reading for academic purposes. And then, and then I met my, my sweet husband uh, when I was 19 years old and we weren't, you know, we we were just we were friends from when I was 18 to 19 and then we started dating when I was 19 and at the time I was going to Sacramento State University and I was in the speech pathology and audiology program I I what was I thinking I am NOT a science gal and for the most part for the most part the speech pathology and audiology course load is very science-based that 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 is not my forte in the least. And so I was really struggling in that program and I was newly dating my now husband, Ted. And Ted encouraged me to take more English classes just to see if I liked it. He knew how I thought, he knew what I appreciated. Uh, I was really into the arts, I was really into music, I was really into um, just that kind, uh, my mind was more bent towards that and here I was in a program for science and it wasn't working out at all. And so he encouraged me to take some English classes and I fell hardcore in love. I had one professor um, who taught early English literature. So we're, we were reading the Victorians. We were reading, I mean, even before that, I mean, we were just, we were just, it was just amazing. Um, I was really in lively discussions about literature the way we were, we were interpreting literature and putting different theoretical le lenses on what we were reading. And it was, I was in heaven. I loved it so much. Also during this point in time, I <laughs> took a Harry Potter class. Yes, I took a, a Harry Potter class. I, no, what am I saying? I'm, I did not take a Harry Potter class. I take that back. I got my words mixed up. I took a Lord of the Rings class and I was, it was great. We discussed Tolkien and we listened to recordings of him and we thought a lot about what he wrote and I read The Lord of the Rings in that class and it was a whole heck of a lot of fun. And it's just fun to say I took a Lord of the Rings class in, in college. And so I ended up finishing out my education with a bachelor's in language arts <laughs> with an emphasis in I don't even remember what my emphasis is in. But anyways, I, I, I finished it out with, it, with um, my, my bachelor's in English and I didn't know what to do. And at that point in time, we were transitioning our life. Ted and I had gotten married and we didn't know what we wanted to do. And so we decided to pick up and move across the country for a, a job of his in South Carolina, where I am now. I didn't really know what to do with my life. So I had some odd jobs and I would say in my early 20s, I started to get back into reading for pleasure in, in a very real and hardcore way. I was working a job as a receptionist for, gosh, it doesn't even matter, but I didn't, I, I hated my job. I didn't like what I was doing. I didn't love the way that I was contributing to society. And so instead I decided that I really wanted to work for 
work for the library. I, again, I was really into reading. I think in a lot of ways I was reading the things that I felt like I had missed out on in high school. And so I was reading um, Suzanne Collins' The Hunger Games. I read The Perks of Being a Wallflower. I was really into like post-apocalyptic YA fiction at that time. <laughs> And I was really loving my life. I was really getting it at that point in time. And so I was using the library quite a bit as well because I was reading enough that I didn't want to spend all of our extra money on books. And so I was using the library and all of a sudden I had this brilliant idea that I wanted to <laughs> work at the library. And so indeed I got a job as the children's librarian, the librarian for children's services at this teeny, 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 tiny little local library. And I read picture books to the kids for story time. And I did some outreach programs in which I visited daycares and I read story time there and went to the rec center and I read, read books to kids over there as well. And it was a whole lot of fun. But also working at a tiny library, there wasn't a lot of upward mobility. There was one job right above me to be the, the library, the branch librarian at that at that library that was the only other job there were two people running the, running this library and I was one of them and the only other job was to be the boss of the library and I didn't really want to do that like at all and so I was being told at this time that and that and it you know really kind of moved me that I was like a teacher at heart with all the things that I was doing I was very much you know a teacher and I had the, the spirit of a teacher and I really took this, these um, comments to heart. And so what I did was I decided that I wanted to be a public school teacher. And with my degree, the only job that I could do was to teach a single subject in middle school or in high school. And so I chose the youngest age group, age group that I could and I decided to go for it and to do like an alternative certification program in order to teach at the local uh, middle school. And that's what I did. I got a job and <laughs> I don't know how. Um, uh, and I started teaching English with literally no training or experience. And I had never been in a, a middle school before because I was homeschooled. And I started teaching English to these kids, English language arts. And it was the trajectory of the next five years of my life. And again, my reading, because Oh, I should go back a little bit. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So at the library, we're talking about my reading life, not my job life. I'll go back to the library for a little bit. At the library, a couple of things happened. I'm gonna focus. <laughs> when I was at the library, I decided that young adult literature, it was fine. Um, I had read a couple of really terrible young adult books. Uh, the Vampire Academy, I think was one of them. Oh, I just, mm. I read a couple of books that really turned me off to young adult literature. I decided that I wanted to read more classics and I definitely got into more like maximalist literature. So while I was at the library, I read Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. I was starting to pick up more just very, like A Brave New World um, by Aldous Huxley. I was, I was just really getting into like what people consider the canon uh, for that time. I read Pride and Prejudice for the first time while I was working at the library. Um, and then I also listened to my very first audiobook and that was Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. And that like blew my mind. I didn't realize that audiobooks could be such an exper experience until I read Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. And I loved, I loved that story. I still love that story. I see its issues. I see people's critiques of it. But at the time when I was listening to it, while working at the library, I fell in love hardcore and I really, really enjoyed it. And at this time, I also was realizing that I love li literary fiction and I got to meet a bunch of readers while I was at the library and I noticed little trends in readers and I just had a great time. I had a great time while I was working at the library, but I also wasn't busy enough and I didn't see where this job could go at the time. And so, you know, again, I, I, I pivoted to teaching. And so so when I moved to teaching after this, these two years at the library, my reading again 
was eviscerated by schoolwork because now I was reading, I was reading the material that I was teaching, reading my students work on the material that we were learning in class. And I was doing my own alternative certification. So I had my own schoolwork for the teaching certificate that I was earning while I was teaching. And so I was really overwhelmed with academic reading um, at this time and in the summers I would read but I was so busy and reading just mostly for work at that point I don't know how, what's going on with my with my eye makeup I don't even know if it looks that good um, but I'm just going for it okay now while I was teaching I decided through a series of events that I'm not gonna get into, but I decided that I really, really wanted to get back to the library because, and I'll say, well, one of the things was that what I was teaching very much was dictated. I was, um, as a classroom teacher, you're very much under a microscope and you don't have a lot of autonomy, at least I didn't. In the school district that I was teaching in, I did not have a lot of autonomy over what I was teaching and how I was teaching it. Because we had a pacing guide, there were certain things we had to teach. It was it was very much a, a dictated system. And so I was really missing the freedom and creativity that I had at the library. It was a rough time. I mean, it was, I learned a lot. I loved being a teacher in many ways. And I also disliked being a teacher in many ways. And one of the things that I was really missing was the library. The freedom of the library, the, the freedom of the library, the atmosphere, the ability to push reading for reading's sake and not to grow kids for testing and things like that. I really was missing it and so I decided that I wanted to go back to graduate school to be a librarian and so that's what I did and again I read. I read for school. I was reading so much for school but here's the deal whenever I had a break from school I would voraciously read for pleasure. So I remember I had a few weeks in between semesters. I had just had my second son. This is how it worked out. I mean, timing impeccable, right? I turn in my assignment on July 28th my last assignment for the first semester of graduate school. And then the next day my son is born. I mean, whew. And he was born on his due date, if you can believe that. And then what I would do is that I would just snuggle him because it was right in between semesters. I would snuggle him and I read Hanya Yanagihara's A Little Life and I was swept away. I love that book. I thought it was amazing. I was so entranced. And I also don't know if I'll ever read it again because the subject matter is so difficult, but I was enraptured by that book. And I really started to love reading for reading's sake again. I was just adoring it. And truly every moment that I had, every free moment that I had, I would pick up reading again. Now, when I graduated from graduate school to be a librarian, would you believe it? It was in July or June of 2020. So the pandemic had just hit and I had two little ones uh, under the age of four and here we are in a global pandemic. I am a fresh graduate of library and information science and I decided, well we decided, my husband and I, that I would stay home and be with the kids. And because of the pandemic, the nature of the pandemic and not seeing very many people, I had a great reading year. I read Middlesex. <laughs> I read the Akira series. I was just in heaven. I was with my kids. I mean, it was hard. There were, don't get me wrong. Being a stay-at-home mom is one of the hardest jobs in the world because you don't have a lot of time off or any. Um, like when your kids are sleeping, you have your time off. But I also was... So I was loving being home with the kids and I was loving, loving reading again. And I fell, hard, fell hardcore for it. And I will say that shortly after, I, you know, after graduating, I wanted to get back into like a reading community. And I thought that I did my graduate school online with the University of South Carolina. It's a fabulous program. I love the program. But the one thing that I didn't get to do in that program was talk about books with people because we did a lot of our conversations in written form online. And so I, I thought that one of my weak points, especially if I'm supposed to be talking to children about books and books and reading, that one of my weak points was actually the ability to talk about books and reading, like actually speak about it. And so one of the reasons why I wanted to start my channel was to start talking about books and reading 
like verbally doing it, <laughs> the actual action of talking about it. And so I started my booktube channel. And from there, I have just, my rating has exploded. It has exploded. Now I'm going to look at Jack's questions because I feel like we're getting to the heart of her, of her uh, tag. I think I answered Jack's what, you know, how has your taste in books evolved through this whole, this whole journey? And then how, how, how you read? Has the format of your reading changed? Yes, yes, it has changed. So I did find audiobooks in the library. I, um, and then my husband, while I was working at the library, he bought me a Kindle Fire, which I, I do like, I did like. It had all the bells and whistles. It had the screen. I, I enjoyed it. But what I found out was that I really loved his paper white. His, um, like, the matted screen so that the glare doesn't mess with your eyes. I really, really love that format. And actually, I know there's another tag going around. And it's some, it, one of the questions is something along the lines of, um, if, like, if you could only read one format of books for the rest of your life, what would it be? Weirdly, I actually think it would probably be the Kindle. I just find it so comfortable. I love my paper books. However, I also love other artsy things. <laughs> so I could imagine my home being, oh, I mean, it hurts to say this, and I feel like it's sacrilege, sacrilegious to say this, but I could see myself as someone who doesn't have books in her home, but someone who has like a lot of artsy objects. It, if I had to choose one format and then I only read on my Kindle, I could see myself as that. Even though I love the physical book, it gives me so much joy. It like moves my spirit in a way that a lot of things do not. But I also get that joy from a lot of other form, uh, forms of art. So actual physical art, little sculptures. When I listen to music, I can feel my heart do double beat. And so I could see myself self as somebody, if I had to, which I hope I will never have to. If I had to choose one format for the rest of my life, it would definitely be the e-reader, at, at least in this moment. So I think I've, I've brought you all up to present day and the last two questions definitely are more about my present day reading. And the first question is question number three on the tag is how much, how much you read? Do you read more or less than previously? When do you read? Has how often you read changed. And yes, I read so much more now than I ever have. I read, I have a, like a reading routine and there are specific time markers in which I do sit down and read that like that is my time to read. And it's just about me like taking that opportunity to, to sit down and read. Uh, but I, I have a, the strongest reading routine that I've ever had now. Um, and I think I, through my journey of, of jobs and talking about where I've worked, you can see that like a lot, or I'm hoping that I have illustrated that a lot of my reading has either been dedicated to work or to some sort of academic program. And this is the, the, the time in which I have definitely prioritized reading as, um, as a thing that I do, um, more than other things because I don't have I, I guess it's like before my reading time sometimes was taken up by the work that I was doing in the world. And since I don't have my reading time being taken up in that way, the space I have for reading is for pleasure. And so um, I take every opportunity that I can to read because I'm not tired out. I'm not tired out in that muscle. <laughs> it's not being taken by my job or my school. So I have that just for me and I definitely exercise it. Uh, quite a bit. And then how has booktube changed you as a reader? Well, I've definitely learned a lot just by having to sit down and articulate who I am as a reader to the camera and to you all. I have done so many bookish tags that I've had to, you know, come up with, you know, answers to questions that I've never thought about. Um, it, like, for example, if you could only read in one format for the rest of your life, what would it be? Like, I didn't think I would say e-reader. I would never have thought about that uh, until I, you know, saw other booktubers talking about that. I also feel a lot more open to books uh, that I just never thought would be for me. I never would have considered myself as somebody who would read the Iliad or the Odyssey and now I have. Booktube has really changed my perception of myself as a reader. I did a whole video last year and I plan on doing one this year but it's like how has my reading changed and I've just or what have I learned and I've just 
just broken my own mental barriers of who I was as a reader uh, while being on booktube. <laughs> also booktube is just they it's like it's the best tool for a reader and it's the worst tool for a reader because there is an event that will go on and it will distract me because I want to join in and that is the best feeling in the world and sometimes it's the worst feeling in the world because it distracts me from like the plan that I had. I realized that I'm a very eclectic reader. I love variety. I love I love just diving into totally different experiences and I love that kind of variety in my reading. And I am a very distractible reader. Um, I've learned that about myself because of booktube because when someone's like, I love that book, I'm like, oh, I want it, I want it, I want that book, please, please. Like, oh. Sandy just talked about the woman that they could not silence and immediately I'm like, I really want to buy that book and read it right now because she said it was like unput downable and I was like, <laughs> I really want to read that. So yeah, so that's that booktube has just been the best, the absolute best. Oh, and how has booktube changed you as a reader? I have reading buddies now, people that I read with, and I think of them almost as gym buddies, like someone you go to the gym with, um, and they keep me accountable, but they also keep me excited about my reading. So when I check in with my friends, if there is like three days in a row where I'm like, oh, I haven't picked anything up yet, or I haven't picked up anything new, or I'm still reading the same book. I'm very aware of that. Whereas I think before I would just let that go. And so I want to finish because I want to say that I'm reading a different book, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just fantastic. Um, and I, I love the community of readers that I have joined and I feel just so, so grateful that, you know, everybody has welcomed me with open arms in that way. Um, so yeah, so that's how booktube has changed me as a reader. If you are ever considering starting a channel, I would say please do. It is amazing. It's wonderful. Best thing I ever did <laughs> in terms of like hobbies and yeah, I just, it's fantastic. Fantastic. Um, and the last thing is to tag some people. So I think a lot of people have done this, but you know, I'm going to tag some people. So give me a moment. I'm going to tag four people, paperback stacks, Jennifer Brooks. I'm like looking at my computer because I'm like well-traveled books and pensively reading. So those you, four of you consider yourself tagged. Um, do this tag if you, feel, if you feel so inspired to do so. Otherwise, no pressure. And that's it from me. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. And 